shots fired at the borders, barricades on the roads and air raid sirens in the cities. And all this in the middle of Europe, another escalation in the Balkans. And most likely not without the help of one of the main instigators of the war in the world. Russia. A confrontation broke out between Serbia and Kosovo. Both countries were once part of Yugoslavia. After its disintegration in the 90s, several countries were formed in the Balkans at once. For many years they fought among themselves for territories. Serbia, which considers itself the rightful successor of Yugoslavia, received the most territory. Kosovo, where the majority of the population is ethnic Albanians, was part of Serbia. The situation worsened in 1990. The Kosovo Liberation Army and Albanian units fought against the Serbian army. In three years, NATO units forced the Serbs to retreat. Kosovo is placed under UN control. Since then, K-4 peacekeepers have been monitoring the situation. On February 17, 2008, the country declared its independence. It is recognized by half of the world, among them, for example, the USA, Germany, France and Great Britain. At the same time, Serbia kept recognizing Kosovo as part of its territory. In Kosovo, however, Serbia's authority was never accepted again. It has its own president, prime minister and parliament. It has its own defense forces and laws. Starting at midnight on August 1, 2022, Kosovo decided to issue entry and exit permits to Serbian citizens entering the territory of Kosovo. It's interesting that the Serbia have been demanding such documents from the Kosovans for 11 years now. Serbia did not like the mirror actions of Kosovo, but that was not all. The Kosovo authorities have decided to re-register cars with Serbia-issued license plates that indicate the cities of Kosovo. It is estimated 10 10,000 cars should receive new number plates. Such air raid sirens sounded in several cities in northern Kosovo. These are territories where the majority of the population are ethnic Serbs. They started erecting barricades and hanging Serbian flags along the roads, covering the streets of populated areas with billboards. And then something very familiar happened. Serbian President Vucic, who came to power in 2017 on the rise of the right-wing forces in Europe, began talking about the preparation of the Kosovars for an attack on his country and threatened military action. Kosovo declared that they once again encountered Serbian chauvinism. After all, one of the leaders of the Serbian ruling party stated that Serbia will probably be forced to begin the denazification of the Balkans. In February 2022, Russian President Putin first announced that Ukraine was preparing to attack Russia and then announced the denazification of Ukraine. Thus he unleashed the war. Instantly, one of the Kremlin's minions, the spokeswoman of the Russian Foreign Ministry Maria Zakharova, declared the West wants to neutralize Serbia by the hands of the Kosovars. That is, the Kremlin's involvement has become quite obvious. So the Serbs say that Kosovo wants to attack Serbia. Serbs raise their flags on the territory of Kosovo. The Serbs are threatening to begin the denazification of the Balkans. This is all the same thing that Russia has been doing with Ukraine for many years. However, this conflict faded as quickly as it flared up. The Kosovo authorities say, no problem, we will return to this issue in a month. And then comes the statement of the Ukrainian foreign ministry, because the hand of the Kremlin is already too obvious. We call on the parties to a constructive dialogue for the sake of guaranteeing the safety of all citizens, maintaining peace and ensuring the stable development of the Western Balkans. It is important not to give the Russian Federation space to implement its policy of escalation in the region. And from that moment we could possibly take a rest from bad news. But at the same time, early elections to the parliament in the neighboring Bulgaria, an ambiguous situation in the parliament of Slovakia, a temporary government in Montenegro. A little further, in Nagorno-Karabakh, pro-Russian forces are making statements that alleged Russian so-called peacekeepers were fired upon from Azerbaijan. The Taliban, who recently participated in the so-called economic summit in St. Petersburg, opened fire on the border with Iran. 
And the only question – how high should the fence around Russia be?